Steve, this is Matt from The Man Cave. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Guys, thank you for posting those videos. Man, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it, especially the good ones, because they're not all equal. There's some that I'm like, man, the Lord really spoke, and that one I was like, what was I thinking that day? I probably didn't have coffee. But listen, the ones that you like and you're posting them, thank you for doing that. Honestly, getting the Word of God out there. And here's the thing, there might be someone like you, if it inspires you, maybe it will lift them up out of the toilet, the storm, the valley. Some of times, we just need to pick me up or our daily devotion today for October the 18th is going to be in what? It's going to be in... <laughs> hey, you know what's coming, don't you? Oh, in the box, baby. He swung, he missed. Matt's on the mound with who? With King Jesus. Hey, today we're going to be in Isaiah 43, verse 8. It's an awesome text. Stick with me. Did I say Isaiah 43, 8? I was testing you, honestly, to see if any of you had like a prophetic gift, okay? Did you catch it? Because I'm not going to be in 43 yet. I'm in Isaiah 43, verse 2. I should, look at, look at. All the gifts we have, God gave us. That's a freebie. That's first free tip of the day in the man cave. Listen to this text. I like this. Here's the thing. This is very encouraging. Yesterday was kind of a sobering devotion, was it not? Yeah, you're like, Matt, it was really sobering. Listen to what God says regarding that when you're in right relationship with Him. Okay? This encouraging word by the Lord. I love this text. It says, when thou, we're going to do it. Okay, he's not saying if, it's just when, okay? When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, look, when the, he's not saying if, he's saying when. Some of you are in the fire right now. You know, here, look at, look at, look at, God's with you, okay? Dance in the fire like the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who was the fourth person in the furnace? King Jesus. That's free stuff, free stuff, okay? So listen, so when you go through the fire, thou shalt shall not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You know, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in defiance, okay, the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what well, happens? They get thrown into the fiery furnace, but here's the thing, when the king looks in there, guess what ends up happening? There's four people in there. Who's the fourth? It's a Christophany. It's King Jesus, okay? When they came out of the fire, because the king's like, I see four people, and the, and the fourth looks like the son of man, okay? Who is it? It's God. He's brilliant. He's brighter than the fire. But watch this. When they came out of the fire, not a hair on their arm was singed, and the smell of smoke was not upon him. That's what God's saying to you. He's saying that, hey, you're not going to have rough times. He's saying this, when you do, okay, the water, it's not going to overflow you. The fire isn't going to burn you. I'm going to be with you. See, he's not giving you a bridge. And you're like, Matt, what are you talking about? I think a lot of us are praying, oh, Lord God, give me a bridge to get over this season, over this event, past this in my life. There are no bridges with God, okay? He goes straight through the waters, baby. I, I'm telling you, the waters can be churning up. And I love the story with the disciples where he says, peace be still. And here's the thing, it's calm. Look, at, look, have you ever seen those lakes where it's just absolutely the water's calm? And what do we like to do? Because we're men in the man cave. Tell me. You already know what I'm going to say. We're look, looking for a rock. Yeah, there's one right here. Look, 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 look. That's the perfect rock right there. Isn't that the perfect rock? You know, no one's around. You know what I'm saying? It's just like glass. What do we like to do? Here's the thing. Don't, don't you dare shake your head at me acting like you've never done this. We like to take that rock and chuck it. And what happens? The ripples, okay? Matt, yeah, yeah, I do that. But what's that have to do with the text? Friends, when God speaks a word in your direction, the waters are calm. Some of you are in waves that are probably 15, 20, 100 foot over your head right now. And you're like looking up at the waves and you're looking at the breakers. You're, you're like looking at the fish in the side of the waves. And you're like, oh my goodness, are you kidding me? God's not fooling around. He puts you in the storm so he can get you through the storm because that's where you build trust and faith in him. Friends, if you were never in hardships and tough times, you would never understand how awesome our God is, okay? Because we're not praising him in the good times like we should. Breakers that are breaking against your face, it's not going to face when we're in the river, okay? When we're in the ocean, we're not feeling the rush of the waves. When we're in the kennel, and when we're in the furnace, we're not feeling the heat of the fire because of why? Who is with us, okay? He's not giving us a bridge. He's saying, I will be with you until the very end. I got your back. I got your hand. Stick with me, bro. Stick with God. Guys, 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 watch this. The presence of God with you, next to you, in you, okay? In the midst of the water, in the midst of the storm, is better than you being in a boat on the water. And you're like, why is that? Because I've seen many boats flip over and everyone dies. Haven't you seen the movies? There's great movies out there. You know what I'm saying? If there's no cussing, I watch them. If there's a lot of language and nudity, I'm not watching it because I'm not putting that filth in my mind. Why? 
because I want to live a life that's pleasing to God? Is it going to get me to heaven again? We've gone over this a 10 million times. No, I'm not doing good things and living in righteousness to get to God. I'm already, God's inside me, okay? The fourth man that was in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego lives inside me through his spirit. Oh, yeah, baby! Guys, and I'm not, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it with you. There, there are things in life that really get us sideways. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes God has allowed some kind of sorrow in our life. I mean, we're just stricken, okay? We feel pierced through and through, okay? But God's equal to the challenge. And not only is he equal, he comes above and beyond, okay, to get us through that hardship, whether it's a loss of life, loss of a job, a divorce, or something that's just happened terrible in your life. Read the text. He's awesome. You know, I know there's probably someone out there that, that, that fear somehow has entered into your life and, and you're afraid. You know what I'm saying? And God says this, and I've said this before and I'll say it a million times, God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's of Satan. Okay, deception, lies, the fear, okay, that's all of the devil and those who practice those things, okay, that's where they're going to be for eternity. So God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of what? Out of strength and of love and of sound mind. And yes, there are things that for a, for a few moments may rattle us, but then when we get our eyes back on God, what are we? We're strong again, okay? God's up to the challenge, okay? Who's walking with you? Well, it's Jesus. How tough is Jesus? I mean, honestly, let's just talk about the man Jesus. How tough is Jesus? Uh, they whipped him 39 times with glass and metal, shards, okay, and a leather whip, okay? They pulled out his beard. They punched him where the Bible says he was unrecognizable, okay? They mocked him. They ridiculed him, okay? He had all power anytime he wanted to to speak a word, and all those people would have been annihilated. They would have been destroyed, but yet he's on the cross, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. Meaning they're acting foolishly, they're acting stupid. Why were they acting stupid and foolishly? Because they had incorporated sin in their life. Sin is darkness, sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Watch this very carefully, okay? So when we're in sin, what are we? We're always blinded. We always think we're not blinded, okay? But we can't see through the fog to see that we are blinded. It's a free one for you. Watch this, watch this, stick with me. Are, are you with me? Are you with me? Okay, listen, listen, listen. So when I say, how strong is Jesus? Jesus is ten, a million times stronger than me. On top of that, he died, he arose, he now has a new glorified body. In Revelation chapter 1, John describes him as the mightiest warrior ever. Do you understand? He has a sword. Okay, look at, look at. Jesus is next to you. You need not to fear. Okay? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. So uh, what God is saying, no matter what happens in your personal life, no matter what happens in the economy, no matter what happens in the world, okay, it's not going to throw you a curve. Okay? I always throw the heat. Why? Because the heat is straight on. When I'm throwing that number one ball, what am I throwing? I'm trying to throw it right in the box. God throws a strike every time. Do you understand? There is no foul ball. There is that guy hitting it. You're never going to hit one off King Jesus when he's throwing the heat on in, in, in the Yankee Stadium. You're not going to get a base off Jesus, okay? But you can if you're running with Jesus. And, and you're like, well, again, Matt, what are you saying? I'm saying this. The things that are about to take place in the world, okay, in America, God's saying it's not going to overwhelm you. You're not going to be burnt by the fire. The waves aren't going to overcome you, okay? You, you don't need to fear. I'm with you, okay? Just as I, and when I read these stories in the Bible and, and I see what God did for this guy, he'll absolutely do for me because he doesn't love Elijah more than he loves me and he doesn't love Moses more than he loves me. He loves me equally in Christ. He would have died alone for me. He gave his flesh for me. God gave his son for me. The blood was all over the ground for me. Do you understand how much he loves you? And he, he bought you. Do you think he would buy you and then discard you and think you're on your own now? <laughs> Look at this. No, 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 no. Especially when you are a child of his. You are his inheritance. That's how he sees you. He says, you are my beloved. God absolutely loves you. share something with you. The people that truly love me. I mean, not playing lip service. When things are hard in my life or I've made a mistake or sinned against God, they aren't forsaking me. I mean the people that are with me through the thick and the thin. Do you know I trust them? Why? Because they love me. They always have my best interest at hand. Now, let's think about my Heavenly Father giving His Son for me. He lived a perfect life. He died for me, okay? And He would have done it a thousand times over. How much does Jesus love me? How much does God love me? And not only did Jesus give His life for me, He gave me His Spirit, which indwells me, okay? So He's leading me, guiding me, counseling me. He's not forsaking me no matter what happens in the world in the coming days or in America, okay? God is with me, okay? He says, you're, you're going to be fine because of me. Not because of you, but because of me. Man, that's totally awesome. It is totally awesome. You're a child of God. You see what I'm saying? Now, it's the same promises that apply to you, 
They don't apply to someone who's outside of Christ, outside the fence wall of the camp, okay? Who's not in the beloved. So if a person hasn't given their life to God, I tell you what, in a million years I wouldn't want to go through what they're going to go through in the coming days. What's written in Revelation and Daniel, Ezekiel, and what we're experiencing economically and socially and politically here in America. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't want to do it. But in Christ, I can do all things through Him. He's going to take care of me. Hey, let me tell you a story and I'll close here, okay? Where I'm working now, they have a really, really nice uh, cafe. It's so state-of-the-art. It's more like a restaurant kind of deal. Cool tables. It's all it's all tricked out. You know, It's like, oh my goodness, look at this place. It's totally awesome. You know what I'm saying? Well, I was talking to my kids this morning and they say, Dad, you know, because I sent them pictures of this place. It's really state-of-the-art, just absolutely cool. It's better than going out to a restaurant. And what they're trying to do is keep people in-house, okay? So watch this very carefully. I'm talking to the kids, telling them I sent them pictures of this stuff. And they says, oh, man, do you, do you think we could go sometime? I says, you could go right now, okay? And you could order anything you want. And all you have to do is sign your name. And they go, what? Are, are you kidding me? I go, no, I'm not kidding you. And they go, no way, Dad. I'm like, yeah. You see what I'm saying? You could just go in there, order anything you want. All you have to do is sign your last name. And they go, how, how come? Because it's all taken care of. And they're like, y no way. I go, yeah. And they, they start going over food items like triple cheesecake. i like, yeah. A triple hamburger, extra bacon, extra cheese, yeah. Fries, fresh fries, not the stuff that's been sitting there in the pan. No, fresh fries. You can send them back if they're not fresh. You know what I'm saying? Unlimited Cokes, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Onion rings, yeah. Blooming onions, yeah. All this stuff. You with me? And they, they're they just so amazed. We just sign our last name, right? I go, right. And they're like, and everything's free. I go, right. It's all taken care of. Right. It's the same with you and I and God. Do you understand that? When you're a child of God, Jesus died. He's given you the signet ring. Okay, he says, ask. You receive not because you ask not. Uh, are you understanding? See, most of the people in the man cave, and for so long I didn't understand how God views me in light of eternity and my position in the heavenlies. Okay, where am I right now in God's mind? I, I'm here, but he sees me, okay, being with him for eternity. He's already seen what I'm going to do in my life, what I'm going to accomplish, what I'm going to bless him with, all these different things. He's already seen it, okay? And he sees me positionally, not here on earth, but with him in heaven. I am positioned in the heavenlies. That's what scripture tells us. I have the signet ring. I can sign the last name, which is what? Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the bright and morning song, the Alpha and the Omega. Oh my goodness. Man, I, man, how can I sign? If, are you in Christ? Have you asked Him into your heart? Did you, did you ask forgiveness of, of your sins? Then you're in Christ. You, some of you just don't realize it. You, you have no idea how rich you are. You, look at, look at, look at. You, you, you know what? You're still digging in the trash can, okay? You're acting like a pulper, okay? You're doing all these things. Because you don't understand your position in Christ, partner. Look, you don't understand who you are, okay? It's not about you. It's He adopted you in, okay? You have royal blood. You're different than the world, okay? You, God says you're separated, okay? Really? God's going to die and give His... Uh, God. We're talking about God Himself, okay? Coming in flesh, living perfectly and dying for you and, and bringing you in, baptizing you in the water, in the blood, okay? Into Him. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Who are you? Oh my goodness, I'm a child of God. Who, who can, can you sign? Yeah, I can sign. You know what I'm saying? It's just like my kids in the cafe. Sign that last name. Boom. Matt, where are you going with this? When you're going through hard times, I want you to remember your last name. I want, I want you to remember who's adopted you. I, I want you to remember who's your Lord, who's your King, who's your Master. I want you to remember who gave His life for you. Okay? It will help you when you're going through those difficult times, okay? And realize this, he's right next to you. He's not going to leave you. He's not forsaking you, okay? He's with you, okay? You're his. What you need to do, Matt? You need to believe it. Believe what? Believe who you are in Christ? I need to live it. I have to understand it, believe it, walk in it, okay? You have to do those things. And as you do it, you're a victor. You're not a victim. As a man thinketh, so is he. Start thinking like a king's kid. Do you understand? Look at me. Do you understand me? Start thinking like you're a child of the living God. Realize that here's the thing. You're going to get the breakthrough. God says, I can open any door. I can protect you from any enemy, okay? I can raise the dead. I can heal the sick. I can make the lame to walk. He can do it all. You just need to rest in it, believe it, and walk in it from this day forward, okay? And you will have the victory. Hey, this is Matt from the Man Cave.